Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired a meeting of the Government Executive Committee held remotely. His Royal Highness reaffirmed that Bahrain has mobilized the full strength of its resources in order to safeguard public health and overcome obstacles imposed by the global spread of COVID-19 under the leadership of His Majesty the King. He stressed that at the current stage of the COVID-19 pandemic, the responsibility of each member of Bahrain society is to to protect themselves, his family and his community through being responsible and a responsible commitment to precautionary measures and official public health guidelines. His Royal Highness reiterated that Bahrain continues to develop policies to mitigate the virus and expressed appreciation for the dedicated efforts of Team Bahrain to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Following consideration of a report submitted by the National Medical Task Force to combat the coronavirus headed by the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, a decision was taken directing the National Medical Task Force to set mechanisms for expanding face mask wearing in public settings. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met remotely with the Ambassador of the United States to the Kingdom of Bahrain, His Excellency Justin H. Sibirel and the Commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command Vice Admiral James Malloy. His Royal Highness highlighted the continued support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa towards expanding long-standing ties and creating a growing base for cooperation between Bahrain Bahrain and the United States across all vital sectors, including defense. His Royal Highness noted that the unprecedented challenge of COVID-19 requires integrated and collective efforts to ensure the safety and health of all. In this regard, His Royal Highness underscored the importance of further advancing cooperation between both countries at all levels. The meeting also provided an opportunity to exchange views on regional and international developments. Bahrain Defense Force Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Saikri Naimi also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed joy over the victory of his horse Valerian Steel in the British horse race. He affirmed that this achievement was the result of the support of the kingdom to horse riding thanks to the constant support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the sport. His Highness added that with the resumption of horse racing in Britain after its temporary postponement because of the coronavirus, Team Victoria successfully won the race. He stated that Bahrain was keen on participating in the race to test the level of Team Victoria's and that Bahrain managed to add another achievement to its record. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for Zia Zainal along with a number of members of Parliament paid an inspection visit to Bahrain International Centre for Exhibitions and Conferences where they were briefed on the measures taken to test the active cases and suspected cases. Zainal affirmed the Council's full support towards the preventive measures taken by the Kingdom. She praised the measures taken and the readiness to attend any challenge in line with international standards which reflects the efforts of the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. She pointed out that the latest measures to bring life back to normal gradually will increase the awareness of the people and the support the she development efforts of the Kingdom and achieve stability on the social and economic levels. Zainal also praised the efforts of the Kingdom's frontliners in combating the virus and the sacrifices they make for the sake of the Kingdom and its people.
The Southern Governor Razana Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa conducted a field visit to Khalifa Town in the presence of the Deputy Southern Governor Brigadier Isa Thamir Dosiri, as well as several officers and officials. His Highness met a number of citizens remotely and was briefed on their needs and suggestions. He affirmed the Governorate's keenness on bolstering cooperation and coordination with the security agencies at the Ministry of Interior, such as the Southern Governorate's Police Directorate, to meet the needs of the citizens. He also underscored the continuous follow-up on the services being provided and developed in the area, as well as the keenness on providing the remaining necessary services to the area. For their part, the citizens expressed thanks and appreciation to the governor for his support and communication for, to, for conveying their needs to the authorities concerned. His Highness then inspected the lighting poles recently installed as part of the communal efforts between the governorate and the Ministry of Works and Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, as well as the Electricity and Water Authority. The Court of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister held a meeting in the presence of the Minister of Cabinet Affairs Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Mtawa and Sheikh Hassam bin Isa Al Khalifa, which was attended by the Under Secretary of the Court Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa. The meeting included discussion on the work and duties of the Court and the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs and implementing the directives of His Royal. Highness the Crown Prince Al Mutawa and Sheikh Hassam bin Isa praised the capabilities of the attendees and affirmed that their skills will contribute in developing the work of the courts and the ministry. They affirmed everyone's keenness to implement the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in order to serve the country and its people in all fields. They expressed their thanks and appreciation to Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa for assuming their new responsibilities, which go in line with with the aspiration of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, participated remotely today in the Donors Conference for Yemen 2020, organized by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in partnership with the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, chaired by the Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs, Prince Faisal bin Farhan bin Abdullah Al Saud, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the Yemeni Prime Minister, Dr. Mu'in Abdel Malik, the Advisor of the Royal Court and General Supervisor of the King. Salman Center, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz al Rabia, and the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordination of the United Nations, Mark Lowcook, as well as Foreign Affairs Ministers and senior officials participated in the meeting. In his speech, Zayani expressed thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its efforts exerted in support of the people of Yemen to restore their state and its legitimacy, as well as achieve peace, security, and stability in the country. He also expressed thanks for the various forms of humanitarian relief provided, affirming that the initiative to host this conference reflects Saudi Arabia's keenness on supporting Yemen and its people. The Foreign Affairs Minister reiterated Bahrain's support to the efforts of the UN to spreading peace and stability in Yemen. He hailed the initiative launched by the UN Secretary General and called for an immediate ceasefire and rather dedicates all international resources to combat the coronavirus, which was received an immediate response from the Arab coalition to support legitimacy in Yemen. He added that the militant Houthi group unfortunately did not respond to this humanitarian initiative but continued to violate the ceasefire proposal and refused to cooperate with any international efforts to mitigate the spread of the virus, despite the serious health situation and the weak health infrastructure in Yemen, which requires urgent intervention from the international community. As Ayani affirmed the kingdom's support to the efforts of the UN Secretary General, he also emphasized the importance of agreeing on a political solution to end the war in Yemen according to approval of according to approved international references. He affirmed that the Houthi militias must realize that it should realize that the conflict in Yemen can only be resolved by accepting international legitimate decisions and adhering to its commitments 
so that Yemen can return to being a peaceful and safe country. The Coordination Committee at the Capital Governorate held a meeting remotely chaired by the Capital Governor, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa. The efforts of the Governorate to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus and the precautionary measures adopted, as well as coordination and cooperation with the authorities concerned, were all discussed during the meeting. Statistics were also reviewed on the inspection campaigns of communal residence buildings, which were conducted by the Governorate's team along with the Capital Secretariat, the Ministry of Health, the Electricity and Water Authority and the Capital Governorate's Police Directorate. The joint team affirmed that the statistics has shown a success in lowering the workers' population density by 48%. The team continues to conduct field visits daily to inspect correct the conditions of most of the violating buildings. In this regard, the Governor briefed the committee members on the efforts of the Governorate in cooperation with the Police Directorate in distributing meals and food packages as part of the efforts to alleviate the financial burden the virus has inflicted on the citizens and residents of the government. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 8,413 with 333 recoveries and 431 registered new cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in partnership with the United Nations, is organizing a Yemen donor teleconference, which is a continuation of the Kingdom's efforts to serve the Yemeni people humanly, economically and developmentally. The Saudi Ambassador to Yemen and General Supervisor of the Saudi Programme for the Development and Reconstruction of Yemen, Mohammed al Jabr, affirmed that the Kingdom is the largest supporter of Yemen, with a total value of humanitarian and development aid amounting to about 17 billion US dollars. The ambassador also confirmed that the kingdom is working through the Saudi program for the development and reconstruction of Yemen to implement 175 projects covering several sectors including education, health, energy and water. Meanwhile, Dubai will allow shopping malls and private sector businesses to operate at full capacity starting tomorrow, June the 3rd. The decision under the directives of Dubai's ruler, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, was made as the Emirates continues easing coronavirus restrictions previously implemented to slow the spread of the virus. As restrictions began to ease over the past few weeks, all individuals and businesses have been required to adhere to preventive measures, including maintaining social distancing and wearing face masks to avoid any further spread of the virus. Chinese researchers announced that they are 99% confident that the vaccine they are developing will be effective in fighting the emerging coronavirus. According to information published by the British newspaper The Sun, the Chinese company Sinovac, specialized in biotechnology research, has entered the second stage of experiments related to the vaccine that it is developing as more than a thousand volunteers participate in this stage amid great optimism among the researchers that they can soon produce the vaccine. The company also said it had started preliminary talks to enter the third and final phase of the test, which would be conducted inside Britain. And now here's Bara, here's Bara with the latest business news. Thank you, Sarah. Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah and starting with the local stocks, as Bahrain O Shares Index has closed at 1,269.71 points, marking a decrease of 1.15 points below the previous closing. 
Results indicated that 79 equity transactions took place with a volume of 3,685,258 worth 492,997 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the services sector, representing 58.15% of the total value of securities traded. Singapore reopened 75% of its economy today as part of a three-phase controlled approach to end its anti-coronavirus lockdown since April. Finance, electronics, manufacturing and logistics resumed operations with a strict safety requirements after a two-month closure to prevent the spread of the virus. But most retail shops, personal services, dining at restaurants and social gatherings are still banned. Venezuelans are now able to buy gasoline at international market prices, marking a historic break in the socialist country's practice of having the world's cheapest fuel. President Nicola Maduro said that as of Monday, 200 filling stations across the nation will allow drivers to fuel up for the equivalent of 50 cents a liter or 1.90 US dollars a gallon. Venezuelans will also be able to buy a limited amount of subsidized gasoline each month, paying 2.5 cents a liter or 9 US dollars a US cents a gallon. Ukraine has further eased its coronavirus restrictions, allowing inner-city travel and opening gyms. Ukraine announced that inner-city passenger trains and local commuter trains could resume starting Monday in 10 of Ukraine's 25 regions. The authorities also allowed gyms and swimming pools to reopen across the country. Tourists were permitted to visit the tightly controlled zone around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the site of the world's worst nuclear accident in 1986. Shares were mostly higher in Asia today, lifted by moves to reopen many regional economies from shutdowns aimed at containing the coronavirus pandemic. Benchmarks rose in Tokyo, Hong Kong and Seoul, but fell in Shanghai and Sydney. Jakarta's main index jumped 2 percent and Singapore was up 1.2 percent as authorities were winding down some pandemic precautions. And that's all for the business news for this evening, and it's back to you, Sara. Thank you, Bara. Spanning 85 acres, these are the famed ruins of old Ostia, ancient Rome's bustling harbor city, just 15 miles away from the Colosseum at the mouth of the Tiber River. This was once home to more than 60,000 people. Completely open air, the Ostia Archaeological Park offers visitors a glimpse of Roman life 2,000 years ago, homes, shops and baths as well as the docks. Italian museums and parks were given to green light to reopen last week for the first time since early March, but few were able to welcome visitors immediately.